Welcome to another edition of CSEC Literature Circle, where we invite you to join us in an exciting and informative exploration of those poems which do appear on the CSEC English B Syllabus 2018-2023. My name is Leslie Lett, and today we are fortunate enough to have with us three experienced teachers of literature. And from my immediate left, let me introduce them, Miss Carolyn Garner, Miss Rosemary Rudder, and Miss Kerry McLean. And in this episode, we are going to examine the poem by Stuart Brown called Test Match Sabina Park. And a little context is helpful here. We are dealing with cricket. And uh, cricket has been for a long time been very important to West Indian civilization. It's been used as a metaphor for West, Indi West Indian identity, self-assertion, um, expression, our creativity, and also our protest against forces external to us. Cricket was seen as the quintessential colonial possession, um, a symbol of their superiority, of their dominance. And cricket was used by West Indians to turn that on its head. And we, for years, for 15 years, as David Rudder said, we ruled the cricket world. Now, I know in 2019, this is going to be something very new <laughs> to you. But luckily, just four months ago, in January 2019, West Indies regained the Wisdom Cup, and we put some lashes under the colonial master. So cricket has always been seen as that, ex it's that experience, that event that West Indians have taken, adopted from the foreigners, and have beat them at their own game. It also impresses upon us the federal, the federal mission. It's the event, the enterprise that we have come together in and has made us supreme. So the message there. A very important one is that together, taking out the insularity, parochialism, xenophobia, the solidarity of the West Indian Islands, we can achieve world dominance, so to speak, and superiority. And with that in mind, I'm going to ask Rosemary to move right into Test Match Sabina Park. Test Match Sabina Park. Proudly wearing the rosette of my skin, I strut into Sabina. England boycotting excitement bravely. Something badly amiss. Cricket, not the game they play at Lords. The crowd, who ever saw a crowd at a cricket match? Our caged, vociferous partisans, quick to take offense. England 68 for none at lunch. What sort of bat in that man? Them can't play cricket again. Perhaps them should have borrowed Lawrence Row. And on it goes, the wicket slow as the batting and the crowd restless. Hey, white boy, how your brothers them does stand with sleep to? Me I pay money to watch this foolishness. Cha! So I try to explain in my Hampshire drawl about conditions in Kent, about sticky wickets and muggy days, and the monsoon season in Manchester, but fail convince even myself. The crowd's loud busing drives me out, skulking behind a tarnished rosette, somewhat frayed but unable quite to conceal a blushing nationality. So here we have the perspective of an English supporter who is arrogant but by the time the experience is over, he has been cut down to size. So in the beginning, he struts into Sabina. And a strut would suggest, you can visualize this Pompous. man with his Pompous. chest pushed up. And Sabina probably should, we should make it known as Jamaica. <laughs> yes, in Jamaica. As you can tell from the dialect that was used. And by the time he leaves, he's skulking. Like leaving with his tail between his legs, defeated. 
The question we can ask, though, is why does he feel so defeated? If you're gonna... Well, it comes down to... Now, cricket is the English game. They're supposed to be. They invented the game. They're the masters of this game. And how dare these caged, which would suggest animalistic people, take their game and make it into something that is not as, as um, explored at large. The poem really, as Leslie would have suggested when he was putting it in context, explores the idea of identity. Right? Um, we take something, we make it our own. Even the atmosphere that is explored at, at large is quite different from the noisy, boisterous crowd that you would get at a, at a cricket match in the mm -hmm. West Indies. And therefore, I think he, the, the persona, he would have been in shock because he was so arrogant, I should say, that he, he had to leave after the crowd really didn't take him on. They just continued to be themselves. And I think that that is the message that really should should come home. Yeah, it's using uh, a specific test match in 74, mm -hmm. uh, which was drawn um, in Jamaica. And I think we should, the, the, the language that, the first, the first stanza, with, they use some lovely puns. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 They use the words boycotting, excitement bravely, and something Badly miss. And you'd have to know something about it. You'd have to know about Jeff Boycott, yeah, who was known for being a stodgy, inelegant batsman, who was more um, concerned with occupation of the crease than scoring runs. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, he was very unentertaining. Mm -hmm. He was the antithesis of right, West Indian Or batsmen. Chris Gale, if you're going to give a, uh, a, um, a con. Yes. A contemporary reference. The antithesis of that. Mm -hmm. Dennis Amos in that test. They have, England saved the test by Dennis Amos batting for nearly. Dennis, I have it here. Dennis Five Amos batted for 570 minutes wow. to score a double century's highest score. Nearly. That's nearly 10 hours. Yeah. So Over it day. was. It was something that West Indians. We're um, We don't bat like that. Mm -hmm. That is not our. We have a joie de vivre. Yeah. We have an enthusiasm. I'm not going to call it carnival because <laughs> creolization. That, creolization of the cricket was, mm -hmm. is a proper term. Yes, uh, I don't just put it. I don't put it in terms of we are cavalier and don't careish because that that seems to um, support what Mark Nicholas said some years ago about bringing this cricket. We have there's some thought, but that is not That's our style. Right. We are mm -hmm. exuberant. We have exactly. flair. We have fun. And that's what they're complaining. That's part of our identity. Yeah. And the match, the cricket match itself, is not only on the field. Uh -huh. so ah, the, that's that, a very good point. So the liveliness of the crowd yeah. and the dialect, you know, that, that conveys, that's part of the identity. And the crowd interacting not only with other spectators, but with cricketers. And this would become, this is a complete, as we were talking, say, a complete contrast with Lords, where you go to cricket and you wear a suit. Jolly good shot, sir. Jolly good shot, oh my goodness. <laughs> but West Indies, you go and you wear that, it's nothing. And you, you, you behave accordingly. We are exuberant. We, we are exuberant. Are we enjoy our people. cricket. We, are, we love our cricket. Exactly. Now we express ourselves differently. Mm. Caroline, you want to come in here? Um, I would just point out, um, go back to the cage versus the first partisans, mm -hmm. um, where he makes the point that they were quick to take offense. Now, it wasn't that, as you mentioned, the West Indians are people who are, are, are very vocal. They like to make their, their opinions known. Yes. So therefore, we are not taking offense by anything. It's just that that's how we are. That's, that's the West Indianness of us. So therefore, when we make a point about something, if we criticize an individual about something, it is not that we, want, we don't like them, we dislike mm -hmm. them, or we, we show racism, because we can't, as, as someone said to me, we can't show racism because we are black. Um, but it is showing that we are sometimes a little too vocal for some people to even think that we should be. Mm -hmm. So his, our vocalness caused him to think that we are, we are often taking offense. Where in truth and in fact, that is yes, just how we that's are. That's a very good I want to pick up on the, the, yeah, I, our culture. Mm -hmm. misunderstand. Yes, I want to pick up on the point of the language, though, as um, we were saying earlier that one of the teams was identity. 
And the struggle in this poem is really reflective of the, I don't want to say, the oppressed against the colonial. So your language is one of your strong tools. And you would notice in the poem that although the persona tried to use his Hampshire drawl, the abusing drowned him out. <laughs> All right, and that's our, that, that in a sense was a rejection yeah. of, the, of the colonial frame. Framework. Additionally, um, as you spoke of the language, if you noted, he did use the Jamaican dialect, but where is his Hampshire draw in quotation marks? Mm -hmm. What does he say specifically yeah. to those people to make his point, to put his point across? I don't even think he had a point because <laughs> he said, he tried. I tried. It gets driven out, as line 23 said, it gets driven it out. It gets driven out, but even, but even himself. Mm -hmm. He said, I failed to convince even myself. So I think that that reinforces the point of that. When we're unified, when we're unified, we stand in a, in a, in a better yes. position. I have to say something, Caroline, and I wanted to, both now you've brought two things which can black people be racist. I know this clearly we associate racism with black oppression. However, this is a, blacks here are in the majority. Mm -hmm. So I think we can be, I think blacks can be racist. The other thing you said about Caribbean unity, we know as West Indians and the impact of cricket that it was a unifying force. But is that really spoken to in this poem? And I think this is what we students have to be really, really careful of. And I know I do it because I'm human. You bring in your own personal bias and your own personal experience into the analysis of a poem. And I think we have to treat them. Obviously, mm -hmm. putting in context helps with understanding. Mm -hmm. But I think we also have to look at internal integrity within a poem. We know because it's West Indian cricket here mm -hmm. that cricket was unifying, but is there anything within in this poem. poem that suggests cricket being a unifying force among in the West Indies? Is that addressed or is it just just Jamaica here, Test Match Sabina Park, for, as I'm reading it, it could be Test Match Kensington Oval or mm -hmm. Test Match. But, um, you are, exactly as you said, it could be, mm -hmm. so it's represented any of the regions, mm -hmm. any of exactly, the West Indies. But I do not think the unifying force that is cricket is a significant theme here. The, unif the stamping of our West Indian mm -hmm. identity, yes. But this poem does not speak to the insularity between the nations. Well, the, I didn't say the unifying force of cricket, but the idea of coming together because they were seen as a, it was him, it was, the persona, it was the persona, it was the persona, and it was the, the crowd. crowd. They were yes. all lumped. Yes, and this but, is well, his but not West Indian islands. The crowd is in all the different spectators. But the, the ones that were vocal, that were abusing, would have been, would have been the, Jamaicans. Jamaicans here, mm -hmm. there's nothing to indicate that there weren't others. But that there's, they, exactly, but there's but nothing what, to indicate that there are other nationalities here. But I don't, I don't, but no, it, let's it, not nitpick at that's, that. That's important in here because we, the, the context is cricket is yes. a West Indian enterprise in <laughs> yes. which we have been very successful. Mm -hmm. It has to be set somewhere. Yes. Okay. But I want to pick up the point that you made about it. Race cannot, we cannot ignore race. Mm -hmm. Race is a topic. But I think we have to be very careful when to make a distinction between racism mm -hmm. and prejudice. Racism is the belief that your race is inherently superior to another race. And I, the historical experience has, has not shown me that this has ever been something with which black people have been afflicted. I think we can be prejudiced. Mm -hmm. I think we can be bigoted. Those are bad things. Mm -hmm. But I do not think um, racism would quite would fit there. But race is a... Is a um, the, the idea that race uh, is an there. issue comes out from the beginning mm -hmm. because his skin his seems is a rosé. Probably. So he figured because he was he, he, he was white, yeah. and he was from England, because it's not only a matter of, of race, but we own cricket. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is the characteristic colonial mentality. Yes. It's ours. 
We own it. Yeah. And you're probably strutting. The rosette is, of course, a badge of honor, but it's mm -hmm. also pink, the, 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 the Caucasian skin. He goes in all proud. And the experience of it all, the interaction with the Western New Crowd, as you said, you said at the beginning, cuts him down to size. It cricket, therefore, cricket as a, as a leveler is also mm -hmm. an important yes. theme. Cricket is a leveler. And On in the social interactions, we know there was uh, oppression, but on the mm -hmm. cricket field, where everybody where, where, where has an equal chance, mm -hmm. we can dominate. Yeah, and, and I think it's important that the, the West Indian creativity in in taking things, shaping things that forces that were to your detriment, because if we the, can we can the, turn them around, even with our foods. That point like is that. that point is brought up because he said perhaps them should have borrowed Lawrence Rowe. Mm, yes. exactly. Lawrence Rowe made 120 in that in that um, Okay, that in that place. man. Mm -hmm. I want to add to what you said too. Um, the crowd's loud buzzing drives me out. Who's to say that the crowd was only Jamaicans? But it is not. What I'm saying that that is not the theme. That is not the, you know, okay, as a West Indian, and knowing how much insularity exists between the countries, there is nothing in this poem that speaks to this insularity. We're assuming this because of our, our, our knowledge. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you were saying about the, the proud rose that goes to the, this is totally goes from being proudly ready rosette to it becomes starch, it becomes something dirty, mm -hmm. something to be ashamed of. The very Englishness that he mm -hmm. thought was the feather in his cap at the beginning becomes a source of embarrassment. As you said, rightfully, they've cut him down to size. And they've cut them down down to size using their own vernacular rather mm -hmm. than he attacks. That's a rejection of the colonial yes. experience. We reject your language. We'll speak yes. our yeah, own language. Speak, uh -huh. And he can't even open his mouth. All right, that's in play. Or he attempts, but when he yeah. attempts, it's failed. Yeah. It's failed. Look at that image. The crowd, look how the crowd is, the West Indian crowd is described. Predominantly black crowd would have to be. They are caged and vociferous. vociferous. Caged and vociferous. What, what, can, what do we have to say? What, what can we say about this? When you think of a cage, straight comes to mind a zoo, animals. <laughs> wildness mm -hmm. <laughs> untamed exactly so for him to come and ex if that's his perception for him to come and expect that they're going to sit like the people at Lords and clap you know he he from the beginning then was admitting that his perception of mm -hmm. them it was flawed yeah and i like the contrast between stanzas two stanza sorry three and four where you actually hear the West Indian crowds, yes. the totality and the, the exuberance of them, and then you have the reported as counts yes. and reported speech of Stan the Five, where you, you just hear about the draw and what he says. You they don't hear his themselves. language at all. Mm -hmm. The contrast brings out, it contrast heightens the, 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 vi the vitality of the West mm -hmm. Indian crowds and the very staidness and stodginess of the Englishman. And the comment you made about racism and the impl implicit in the racism is something malevolent. The thing about it, even with, there's no malevolence in this crowd. Mm. Even it's an with an the, boy. Airway boy, it's racialized. And that's the thing, I think that in this era of, exactly, in this that's, era, that's like in this era <laughs> of political correctness, we often don't recognize the difference between something being racialized and something being racist. racist. There's, There's no malevolence things. between the mm -hmm. relationship and the interaction he, between the West Indian spectators and him. Hey, well, and anybody who's ever been to a cricket match can attest to this. We, West Indians like to take the mickey out of people. And they will do it very racially. English racist. <laughs> yes, it's very English It's very racist. ironic that she should I know, say that. but I, because we don't have a we don't Probably have a West vision. Part, we can what would be the West Indian part? Be yeah, but yeah, exactly. That's why I had to sugarcoat it. The West Indian, um, but we do it, and it's no hard feelings. But he, he ain't accustomed to this. And so it embarrasses him. But of note, he mm. said, they are quick to take offense. But, yes. Yes. but yet, he laughed, he laughed. before yeah. the match was finished Indeed. because mm. it, they weren't playing his, his, his way. You know, so he's mm. the one, it's all, this, this poem is wrought with irony. Yeah. Somewhat irony. afraid now, but unable quite to conceal a blushing. So it's the nationality is still there. It's still yeah, there. but it's still blushing. But it, it points to the fact you cannot, you can hide, but you cannot get mm -hmm. rid of your nationality. You are who you are. And I think that the 
insistence on using the dialect shows that you are mm -hmm. who you are. You, you, even if you try to hide it, like he did. Because he tries to speak of English conditions, yes. but he says, I, 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 I can't just even get, I can't get said. We like students to come away. We like to give challenge students. So we had some questions no. for the students. So oh, I, I'll ask the panel to, to look at those, okay. so give those questions so students can mull these over in their mind. But we should, before we do that, let's get the, the recap. Is cricket being the leveler? We're looking at um, the idea of national identity, identity, self-assertion, mm -hmm. and unity. Unity, <laughs> debatable, but debatable, yes, unity. But we debatable. know this. We know what we, mm -hmm. we have been. We, the only thing we've been have we've had where white domination is is a, an enterprise where we have come mm -hmm. together as islands exactly. for fifteen years. Mm -hmm. I know this would be unfamiliar with, with young people. Yes. Can we just get licks, licks after licks after licks? <laughs> Caroline, yes? One of the questions I could possibly pose to um, students is can you see a place where individuals of West Indian descent outside of cricket can be so unified that they would stand together against somebody who is not of a similar class or race? One of the pertinent questions I would encourage students to try to answer is, is there a distinction between racism and prejudice? Gary. Okay. Can black people be racist? <laughs> and how do we differentiate between simple racialization or as opposed to racist behavior. I would like to challenge students to ask themselves how they can take a force that is negative, that is meant to keep them down, that is designed for that purpose, and how they can apply our uniquely West Indian creativity, our imagination, our ingenuity, and our energy, our genius, and create something positive mm -hmm. from it. And, and I think this is, this is a message that the poem does bring, bring across, that mm -hmm. we have taken the colonizer, and we have been able, we, we've taken what he designed to to um, impose subjugation, and we have used that to liberate. Yes. And I think that's important, how you can turn a negative into a positive. And I challenge students, as they go about their daily living, to think about how they can manage this in all their spheres. I hope you have found the discussion on this poem helpful to you, and uh, it will help inform your own criticism and examination of the poem. This has been another episode in the series CSEC Literature Circle.